Hello students, welcome to Smart Solution. I am Nikhil and we have started with Standard 8 Geography Chapter Number 2 Land, Soil, Water, Natural Vegetation and Wildlife Resources. So this is the lecture 3 on this chapter. So before checking out this lecture, if you have not seen the previous two lectures, please see in the description. You will find the link below and you can check the first two lectures and then come to this third lecture. Right. So uh, let us start with today's uh, session. So in the previous lectures, we have seen uh, some of the resources like land resource, land use, uh, conservation of land resource, how it is done. The second resource we have seen was soil, how to conserve this soil, how the soil is formed, what are the different layers of soil, factors of soil formation and how the soil is degraded and how it is deteriorated and we have seen some steps how to prevent soil from erosion or soil depletion. So these are basically known as soil conservation measures. After that we have also seen an activity, further we saw what is a water resource, what is the availability of water resource, uh, how much water a person requires for his day to day activities and how this water resources are polluted, what are the ways in which this pollution can be prevented and how this water resource can be conserved, right. So today uh, in the third lecture of this class, so we are starting with natural vegetation and wildlife, okay. Um, so some school children were visiting an exhibition on handcraft. The articles in the exhibition were collected from different part of the country. Mona picked up a bag and exclaimed, this is a beautiful handbag. Yes, it is made from jute, the teacher said. Um, so some school students, they visited to a handcraft exhibition and different articles were collected from different part of the country and were placed for uh, seeing in this exhibition. So there is a girl named Mona. She picks up a bag and says how beautiful this bag is. And if you see that this bag was made from jute. So her teacher says that Mona, this bag is made up of jute. So do you see those baskets, lamps, sheds and chairs? Those are made up of canes and bamboos. So also the teachers add, teacher adds that all the things like basket, lamps and chairs which are kept in this exhibition, they are made from canes and bamboo. So all these products, as you know, we get from forests or from plants. In the eastern and northeastern humid region of India, bamboo grows in plenty. So if you look at the Indian context, Indian geography, so on the eastern front and on the northeastern side, basically these bamboo trees are grown in plenty. There is a bamboo or bamboo farming done. Jesse was exclaimed to see a silk scarf. There was also a silk silk scarf placed in this exhibition which was seen by Jessie and she says see this beautiful scarf the teacher explains that silk is obtained from silkworm that are bred on mulberry trees so after looking at a silk scarf Jessie is fascinated with its beauty and teacher says that yeah this silk is obtained from silkworm as you all have already studied in your previous classes and this Silkworms, they breed or they live or they eat these mulberry trees. Basically living on these mulberry trees, eating mulberry leaves and then producing silk. Right. So this is how silk is produced. The children understood that plants provide us with many different products that we use in our day to day life. So after visiting this exhibition, students saw different products which are obtained from plants and animals. And with this visit, now students are able to recognize that yes. In our day to day life, we use plenty of things that are either obtained from animals or either obtained from nature or natural vegetation. Okay, so natural vegetation and wildlife exist only in the narrow zone of contact between the lithosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere that we call biosphere. So, as we know, that all the living organisms we require um, air, water, food for our growth and for our survival. So a very a small zone where all this combination of atmosphere exists, that is lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere exist, 
only there living organisms can exist and this is known as biosphere okay the region or the sphere where all these lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere exist the region where human or living organisms can grow this is known as biosphere so in the biosphere living beings are interrelated and interdependent on each other for survival so if you see this biosphere all the factors they are interdependent on each other for their survival say for example if you consider uh, a living world and if you consider the cycle of food chain you can say then you may see that they the, the plants are the photoautotrophs or they are the heterotrophs which prepare food on themselves the herbivorous plants they basically eat these plants and they survive the carnivorous plants they eat these herbivorous animals or they eat the animals and they survive on those animals further when these carnivorous animals are dead there are some bio decomposers or decomposers like vultures who eat up these plants and when the vulture is dead there are some microorganisms who eat up these vultures so this is a complete a uh, food cycle so in biosphere you may see that all the living organisms they are depend on one another for their living or they require one other each others support for their survival so this life supporting system is known as ecosystem and uh, these complete animals the system in which they live their life is known as ecosystem okay so vegetation and wildlife are valuable resources plants provide us with timber so vegetation means all the any uh, all the plants sorry green plants and wildlife means all the living organisms into the biosphere you can say or ecosystem you can say all these are very valuable resources so let us see now what plants provide to us so plant provide us with timber they give shelter to animals in forest you can say on trees birds lives on trees animals lives uh, lives uh, in houses made up of wood animals live uh, in some bushes some animals some live underground so basically we get shelter from trees trees also provide us with oxygen because trees are the only living creatures who produce oxygen and all the living organisms require oxygen for breathing right so if trees go on strike and say man we are done we are not going to produce any of the oxygen so we all living organisms other than trees or even trees will be dead away we won't be able to live okay so the major thing trees provide us with oxygen then trees protect soil uh, from soil erosion and essential for crop growing so they also add Uh, fertilizers to soil in the form of leaves or left away vegetation act as a shelter belts so we have seen previously they act as shelter belts preventing erosion of soil due to high winds help in storage of underground water so they also help in storing underground water so how so whenever there is flow of water because of these trees they will reduce the sp- speed of the water flow and the reduce speed of water flow will result into high percolation rate and thereby increasing the underground water so also tree gives us fruit and nuts and latex so we get fruits apple mango banana orange papaya anything nuts like could you recall almond cashew and so on latex latex is basically a rubber turpentine oil oil so we get some oil from the f- plants gum we get gum we also have medicinal plants that we use in our day to day life so you, if you see all the ayurvedic medicines they are derived from this medicinal plants okay also if you would have interacted with your grandparents they would surely suggest you some household medicines which are made up of plants you also use plants for making paper the notebook paper on which you write there is no essential that is so essential for your studies right so all these products uh, if you see like oxygen soil shelter belts underground water fruits nuts latex turpentine oil gums medicinal plants all these substances are of much use in our day to day life right so all this we get from plants so do you think that plants ask from us anything in return for this obviously no 
they don't demand us anything in return right but it is our responsibility to at least conserve them so that they won't extinct away there are innumerable uses of plants and you can add some more so apart from this you may find a number of other reasons which you can make a list of so wildlife so what is wildlife wildlife includes animals birds insects as well as aquatic life forms so mm, in animals everything is counted like birds insects as well as aquatic life so they provide us what do animals in general provide to us primary thing they provide us milk every one of us have at least taken a glass or two glasses of milk when we were small and even presently also we consume lot of milk and milk products like dairy products milk they also provide us with meat they provide us hides that is leather their skin and wool wool is basically obtained from sheep right so these are the major products so these are this we get from animals uh, apart from this insects like bees provide us with honey so honey bee we all know we like honey so much so this honey is collected uh, from flowers in the form of nectar by these honey bees and collected in their honey combs so basically we get honey from these honey bees honey bees apart from this this insects when they move from one plant to another plant they help in pollination pollination is the process by which uh, flower can give uh, or produce seeds which will further grow into the new plants so this they help in pollination this pollination is like uh, g- producing the next generation helping in producing the next generation so insects m- play a major role over there a uh, role to play decomposers in the ecosystem also there are some insects or microorganisms which play the role of decomposers so as we know that whenever any of the plant or animal is dead it gets broken down and broken down in the sense its hydrocarbons bonds in the body or any of the organic compounds they are broken down into the elemental form this is done by some microorganisms and finally you see that everything gets mixed into the soil right so the major important process is decomposition just imagine if there would have been no decomposers then what would have happened the dead animals would have been left there for number of years they would have smelled so badly they would have uh, spread many diseases and the rest of the animals it would have been very difficult for them to survive in such bad smells bad tests and uh, different um what we can say viruses would have been generated out of this right so all these things could have happened if there would have been no decomposers so the birds the birds feed on insects and acts as decomposers as well so birds also feed on insects and they also act sometimes as decomposers as you can see the example of vulture vulture due to its ability to feed on dead livestock is a scavenger and considered a vital cleanser of the environment so it is the habit of vulture to eat dead animals so this vulture plays an important role in clearing or cleaning the dead animals okay so animals big or small all are integral to maintain balance in the ecosystem so with this what we understand that all the animals whether small big or any shape size they are required in the ecosystem to maintain balance okay so uh, this is how uh, natural vegetation and wildlife helps each other or helps us in our day to day life so now let us try to understand how this natural vegetation is distributed um yeah so the growth of vegetation depends primarily on temperature and moisture so if you see this vegetation it requires a specific temperature and moisture so moisture in general it also means water so uh, depending upon the different climatic conditions across dec- different geographies uh, there would be different vegetations across different areas the major vegetation type of wo- types of the world are grouped as forest grassland scrubs and tundras so these are the major vegetations that are found in different part of the world so what are these these are forests these are grasslands these are scrubs and tundras so in areas of heavy rainfall huge trees may thrive so whenever the there is an area which is close to equator if you see the area lying between the cancer of uh, sorry the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn there is a very huge rainfall over there because the precipitation rate is high due to high evaporation and 
huge trees can grow in these areas the forest that are thus associated with areas having abundant water supply so there are huge forest formed due to availability of huge amount of water as the amount of moisture decreases the size of trees and their density reduces but as you see as you move away from this tropic of cancer towards the poles uh, either you will see that the moisture content of the air decreases and hence the density of the forest away from this tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn will reduce okay so whenever there is high rainfall there are very dense forests so as the amount of moisture decreases the size of trees and their density reduces short stunted trees and grasses grow in the region of moderate rainfall forming the grassland of the world so whenever there are moderate range of water resources available or rainfall is moderate not too high not too less so there short trees are grown and they now form what is known as the grasslands okay short trees basically um so next moving thorny shrubs and scrubs grow in dry areas of low on low rainfall so whenever there are very low rainfall regions so for example it could be some desert re region so basically due to unavailability of uh, water very scarcity of water thorny shrubs that is a plant with thorns and scrubs grow in this area so basically if you see uh, the thorns of the plant what are these thorns of the plant so thorns are nothing but the leaves the leaves of these plants have modified themselves in the shape of thorn to prevent transpiration of water or evaporation of water from their surface so if you see any of the leaf of say for example peepal or banana tree or banyan tree there is a huge surface area available to this tree or uh, sorry to this leaf so because of this huge surface area there is lot of evaporation from this leaf but in uh, desert areas where the rainfall is very low trees cannot uh, you know allow so much of water to evaporate from their body if they allow so much of water to evaporate they cannot survive so in order to reduce the evaporation of water from their surface the leaves of these trees are converted into thorns so these are known as thorny shrubs and scrubs which grows in this low rainfall area in such plant in such areas plants have deep roots and leaves with thorny and waxy surface reducing loss of moisture through transpiration and if you see uh, even the roots of such plants are very deep because they have to find water so they go much deeper into the soil and also their surface of thorns uh, leaves are covered with some thorns and sometime even the surface of the leaf it if already existing they could have been covered with a waxy substances so what will happen when this waxy substances is applied on any of the leaf the water evaporation will not take place thus preventing the evaporation of water so tundra vegetation of cold polar region comprise of mosses and leeches and if you see the tundra vegetation in the cold polar region there are mosses and leeches so these are the different uh, regions uh, that exist in different locations of the world today there are many more people in the world than they were two centuries back to feed the growing number large area of forest have been cleaned to grow crops forest cover all over the world is vanishing rapidly there is an urgent need to conserve this valuable resource so if you see the population of the world is increasing on daily basis if you go 200 years back obviously we can say that the population today is much more than it was 200 years back so why is their population growth there are two major factors one is availability of medicinal facilities Uh, so that the death rate is reduced and birth rate is almost increasing uh, second thing is the availability of food initially during previous days food was not available uh, so due to starvation lot of people used to die but nowadays because of availability of food lot of population is increasing but now with this increasing population the food requirement of the population is increasing in order to produce large amount of food a uh, lot of forests are being cleared up or cut down to bring the land under cultivation so this is how the forest is reducing very rapidly so it is our responsibility to prevent forest uh, cutting that is deforestation and help uh, nature to conserve this valuable resources the animals and all the plants that are presently the part of that forest okay so a collage of forest made by school student one of the school student has drawn this uh, drawing so he what he is doing is he is trying to bring to our notice that the tree 
uh, what a tree does or what a tree provides us in our day to day life okay the tree tree the world we depend upon where will we go when the tree is gone so see the student is presenting very good idea if you see your daily life we get oxygen from tree we get food from from tree we get cotton from tree of which clothes are made we live in houses which are almost many times made up of uh, wood again from tree so we can say that human life is a tree right so if trees just imagine if trees are dead no trees alive no human being or even not a single animal living species can survive right so this is a very good thought and we should now or we should even uh, appreciate this and we should inculcate the habit that we at least plant some trees in our vicinity and avoid possibly cutting down these trees and also prevent over exploitation of natural resources okay so now let us look at how the conservation of natural vegetation and wildlife can be done so as we know that forest are our wealth whatever things we get we get them from forest plants gives shelter to animals and together they maintain the ecosystem all these living animals like plants animals all these make up an ecosystem the balance proper balance between them they maintain a proper ecosystem if the balance is uh, missed the ecosystem will be collapsed changes of climate and human interference can cause the loss of natural habitats for the plants and animals so if nowadays if human interference has increased in this uh, ecosystem say for example we are also cutting down trees we are also killing down so much animals uh, a day will come when say for example if a particular type of animal or plant species is completely dead then the balance in the ecosystem or the ecosystem chain will be broken down and it will be very difficult then for any of the living organisms to survive say for example in our the previous case uh, where we saw the food chain say for example if the vulture which is the last creature if that is completely dead away the no more vultures are available then what will happen the dead animals they will be just left out they will smell badly they will be rotting and any of the diseases can be spread through them right so it is our responsibility to maintain each and every species alive in this chain of ecosystem so human interference we are interfering more so our interference should be reduced many species have become vulnerable or endangered vulnerable and endangered means that at any time of at any point of time if they are not paid attention to they may completely exhaust like the case of dinosaurs right do we see any of the dinosaurs now obviously no why because the environmental condition of the earth changed so drastically that these species were not able to adapt themselves to the changed environmental conditions and as a result they have totally extinct away so that should be prevented and that we can prevent by reducing our interference into the ecosystem by reducing the exploitation of natural vegetation and wildlife okay so deforestation soil erosion constructional activities forest fires tsunamis and landslides are some of the human and natural factors which accelerate the process of extinction of these resources so all these reasons like deforestation erosion constructional activities so all these uh, factors they are responsible for process of extinction of resources right so by reducing all these processes we can reduce the process of extinction one of the major concern is the poaching which results in sharp decline in the number of particular species so the major concern is about poaching so by reducing poaching we can reduce the number of particular species from declining the animals are poached for collecting and illegal trades of hide skins nails teeth horns as well as feathers so you may have seen that uh, there are different illegal activities going on in forest say for example people kill various animals like elephants for their teeth uh, rhinoceros or uh, uh, rhinos for their horns Uh, some animals are also killed for their skin some are killed for their feathers beautiful feathers some are killed for their nails in the case of uh, lion tiger uh, so these are all the things or the activities of killing animals so they that is known as poaching basically and this uh, relates or this will lead in future 
to the extinction of these species right so these activities they are illegal and they should be prevented some of these animals are tiger so what are the animals that are being poached these are tigers lion elephant deer black bucks crocodile rhinoceros snow leopard lo leopard ostrich and peacock so all these animals they are being poached these can be conserved by increasing awareness so what is the responsibility of human it is the responsibility to create awareness among the society so that uh, this poaching activity is no more done and if it is done somewhere it should be brought out to the notice of government so that government can take proper action so in order to prevent these activities and in order to conserve the animals that are living in deep forest national parks and wildlife sanctuaries are set up so any of the forest area they are declared as national parks or wildlife sanctuaries so that no hunting of these animals or cutting of these trees is permitted in these areas so that they can be protected for the upcoming generation so biosphere reserves are made to protect our national vegetation and wildlife conservation of creeks lakes and wetlands is necessary to save the precious resource from depletion so see uh, all these animals and plants which are living in forest so they need some water resources so by preventing the depletion of this water resources by conserving this water resources we will be helping these animals uh, to have plenty of water for their survival so water resource management or resource management is al also an important thing there is a balance in the environment if the relative number of species is not disturbed human activity in several part of the world have distributed the disturb the nature habitats of many species so if you see that there uh, if there is an given amount of animals of any species in the ecosystem there is balance but if any of the animal in the ecosystem either they increase very high or they are reduced in number to a very low numbers there is imbalance in the ecosystem and once the imbalance in the ecosystem is created slowly slowly there would be complete collapse of this system so because of human activities the imbalance is created but now we should be taking care we should uh, increase the awareness so that this imbalance is not increased so high that the ecosystem falls very urgently or very fastly due to indiscrimination killing several birds and animals have either become extinct or are on the verge of extinction because of killings of various animals um, several species of birds they have extinct completely so how to prevent this awareness programs like social forests forestry and wano mahotsav should be encouraged at a regional and community level so um, some programs like social forestry and one mahotsav should be done to bring out the awareness school children should be encouraged to bird watch and visit natural camps so that they can appreciate the habitat of various species so school children they should be taken for various camps where they can observe various animals various birds various species and understand their importance and their life processes so many countries have passed laws against the trade as well as killing of birds and animals so if you see in general in world many of countries has passed laws that are against birds and animal killing so in india if you see killing of lion tiger deer and great indian bust bustards are bustards and peacocks is illegal so all these animals which are mentioned over here the killing of these animals is illegal in india right if you kill these animals you will surely be given some punishment an international convention sites has been established that list several species of animals and birds in which trade is prohibited also there is an international convention a list is prepared uh, and depending upon this list then there are some animals and species which have been identified of which trading is prohibited you cannot buy and sell those animals okay that is against law conservation of plants and animals is an ethical duty of every citizen so now it is our responsibility that we conserve all the plants and animals okay so Uh, with this uh, we have completed our chapter so we have just left this forest fire so let us just go through it so see uh, you can see over here there are different paper cuttings uh, attached so what this says that there is some fire uh, as california fire rage for fourth day hopes rest on winds easing so there is a forest fire in california so do you know forest fire uh, a complete forest is on fire and it is very difficult to stop this fire how do we stop how do we pour so much of water on so much of area 
so it is very difficult uh, so there have been numerous incidents of forest fire over the globe so forest fire kills 41 in greece so if you see the second news it says that due to forest fire 41 people have already dead fifth what is this five lakh flee california fires as california fires day hopes rest out california breeze is as fire tamed so there is some redu reduction or stoppage of this uh, fire the fire ha has been extinguished and so now there is some ease in breathing right so kids with matches started massive us fire and what was the reason for this fire see some children with match stick they just started small fire and that has resulted into a huge fire right so there is an activity given to you you can do this read the news items and find out how fire started in california could it be avoided so as we know that this fire was started due to the match stick burn by some students yeah and so can it be avoided do you think that such activities can be avoided obviously yes uh, there should be an awareness camp done uh, so that people don't do such activities henceforth right so forest fire is an is a threat to the entire region of flora and fauna it occurs mainly due to three regions natural fire due to lightning fire due to heat generation in litter due to carelessness of people fire purposely caused by local inhabitants mischief makers and miscreants miscreants so there are three major reasons for fire first is the natural fire which is created due to lightning in the sky second is due to the heat generation in the litter and this is due to the carelessness of people and the third major reason is caused by local inhabitants uh, or some mischief uh, makers or any of is uh, responsible event so how do we control them we can prevent fire through education we should increase the awareness among the people and prompt detection of fire there should be uh, due to the advanced technologies some systems could be available which can be deployed into the forest to detect the fires at an early stage so that when the fire is small and in controllable range that it is easy to extinguish it that should be done right um, so I think we have uh, given a good amount of time for this chapter uh, we have gone through all the details we have also uh, looked into different concepts so I would request you that uh, go through all the three lectures once again if you uh, find anything difficult and if you have any queries further kindly let us know in the comments we would be happy to uh, reply to all the comments do visit our channel on regular basis to get more updates on the upcoming videos and upcoming chapters and please subscribe our channel thank you so what I am doing is I am planning a lecture uh, even on the exercise so in one of the lectures we will try to answer all the questions below your text uh, so please be available for the lecture do visit our site so that you can get the updates thank you for the day